When it comes to Android processors, one name stands tall above all others, Snapdragon. Qualcomm's flagship processors are still the best of the best, and today, the company is launching the newest addition to the line, the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5. Yes, it's a terrible and confusing name, but that's pretty much expected from Qualcomm at this point. Regardless, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about the latest Snapdragon powerhouse, and let's start with an explanation of that name. Hardcore Android fans will know that Qualcomm's flagship processors used to be part of what we called the 800 series. There was the Snapdragon 845, the 855, 865. Then in 2021, Qualcomm changed the naming convention to the Snapdragon 888. In 2022, it dropped that idea and swapped to just eight, starting with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. We saw the 8 Gen 2 and the 8 Gen 3 after that, and then in 2024, it swapped into a new name again with the Snapdragon 8 Elite. No gen number this time. Now, in 2025, Qualcomm is combining the two naming structures, going with the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5. In a blog post on the matter written by Qualcomm Senior Vice President and Chief Marketing Officer, the company tried to call this name simpler and more powerful. It also tried to explain that doing this is reinforcing its leadership position and simplifying how consumers understand our product roadmap. Well, what do our viewers think? Does the new name do any of those things or is it just confusing? Jump down in the comments and let Qualcomm know. Anyway, whether the name is dumb or not, there's no question that the 8 Elite Gen 5 will be one of the best, if not the best, Android processors available throughout 2026. Since things are launching so early now, there will actually be plenty of opportunities to get it in a 2025 phone. For example, Xiaomi has already confirmed that the 2025 Xiaomi 17 series will include the new processor, and we expect those phones to launch later this month. Of course, the biggest phone launch for the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 will come early next year with the launch of the Galaxy S26 series. At least, that's what we assume, as Samsung is a confirmed partner with Qualcomm's latest chip. As usual, we don't know if all the S26 phones will have the processor or if some will come with Exynos chips, but it's nearly a guarantee that at least the Ultra models will have it. Crazily enough, that will mean the phones will come with, here we go, the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 for Galaxy. Whew, that's a lot. Now that that's all been explained, let's jump into some benchmarking. Before I show you these numbers though, keep something very important in mind. These numbers do not come from a retail device. For these sessions, Qualcomm gave us demo units that it created specifically for benchmarking. In other words, it would be unwise to think that the results from this device will match what you'll see from a real device you'll actually buy. Qualcomm designed these devices to produce the best benchmarking results possible. Now that that's out of the way, Let's jump into these numbers. For the CPU, we used Geekbench 6. Qualcomm cranked the peak clock speeds for the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 to a crazy fast 4.6 gigahertz, which is about 6% faster than last year's chip. The company also increased the CPU's efficiency, which it claims can result in up to 20% better performance with 16% better power efficiency. Those are big claims, but the benchmark score here is definitely higher than what we saw last year, so that's great to see. For the GPU, we did 20 runs of 3 d Mark's Wildlife Extreme Test. Check out the numbers here. For GPU upgrades, Qualcomm is claiming up to 23% better overall performance along with up to 20% less power consumption. Theoretically, this means higher frame counts in your games with more battery life. We'll need to see how that pans out in real world usage. Remember, these testing devices aren't ones you'll ever be able to buy, so don't take these results as fact quite yet. Based on these benchmarks, we're seeing a faster and more battery efficient chip, even when compared to the already fast and efficient Snapdragon 8 Elite from last year. If you game a lot, do a lot of console emulation, or do other CPU and GPU intensive tasks, such as video editing, the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 is looking to be the best of the best. Of course, did you expect any different? Okay, so what else is new about the chip that can't be shown through benchmarks? For the camera, the new chip will support the APV codec, which could result in video files having the same quality as last year, but 
taking up much less storage space. It's interesting that Qualcomm is still not supporting the AV1 codec for encoding though, as we have just seen this gain support on the Pixel 10 series with Tensor G5. We're not sure yet how APV will compare to AV1 when it comes to shooting and editing video, but it is possible that it could end up being a terrific competitor to Apple's ProRes feature on iPhones. We'll need to wait and see on that one. The ISP of the 8 Elite Gen 5 also goes from 18-bit to 20-bit, resulting in four times the dynamic range. This could make a huge difference for pro-level smartphone cameras, such as what we'll probably find in the Galaxy S26 Ultra. It will be interesting to see how smartphone companies put this new capability to use. For connectivity, the 8 Elite Gen 5 has the new X85 modem a minor step up over the X80 we saw in last year's Elite. There are the usual claims of faster download and upload speeds along with improved battery efficiency. However, the chip hasn't changed all that much, so it still supports the same Wi-Fi and Bluetooth formats. In other words, there are gains here for sure, but it's not going to be a drastically different experience. At least, I don't think so. And finally, we have AI. I know our viewers care about this the least, but of course, Qualcomm spent a ton of time focused on it. The Neural Processing Unit, or NPU, is up to 37% faster, according to Qualcomm. It also uses something called INT2 Precision, which is new for this chip. This allows for fast computation of highly compressed large language models. With INT2, the Snapdragon 8 Elite can speed through smaller models that take up less memory to store and run, which is always nice especially for those of you who wish these features weren't even on their phone to begin with. However, these smaller models come with some accuracy trade-offs. This also means that LLMs that were previously too big to run on device could now run locally, potentially. We'll need to wait and see what happens over the next six months with that. Okay, that's all the information you need to know about the newest Qualcomm chip. As I mentioned, this is coming to the Xiaomi 17 series first, but for us Americans, the first time we'll see this will likely be in the Galaxy S26 series. However, OnePlus is also a confirmed partner here, so it's possible the OnePlus 15 could land in the US before the Galaxy S26. Either way, you can expect phones from Honor, Nubia, Oppo, Realme, Sony, Vivo, and pretty much every other Android manufacturer that isn't named Google. What do you think about what we know so far about this? Let us know down in the comments. Also, if you wanna dive even deeper into the chip, I've left a link in the description to a full spec deep dive from Android Authority. See you all later.